Hey everybody, Chris here, and today I want to show you how you can take your Android app and give each little activity of your app a background. As you see right here, I do have a background pattern. Uh, by default, I believe the background is just white, but as soon as you add a pattern in, you can start to make your app look a lot nicer in the background. And you can also use the same techniques to change the backgrounds of uh, certain parts of your interface, such as... Uh, right here I have a scroll view layout. I could have put that same pattern on the scroll view instead of the uh, entire background. So uh, you'll notice over here in the resources, uh, resor uh, res for resources, drawable, and then I have skulls.png. That's actually this pattern right here. So if you want to be able to reference a pattern as your background, you have to put it in that folder, res, drawable, and then uh, whatever image file you have that you want to add in. So uh, right here I have another pattern that I've downloaded off the web. It's called uh, school.png. I believe I got it from um, subtlepatterns.com. A uh, pretty cool place. You should check it out. It's great for web design and also for uh, development as well. Um, so I have extracted that pattern basically to my desktop. And now I have it control C to copy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the drawable folder and I'm going to paste it in. Or you could use control V. Uh, copy file, the directory, yup, new name is fine, so we hit OK. And now it should show up right here. Uh, if I double click it, we can take a look at what that pattern looks like. Um, it's kind of a light pattern, as most of the patterns are in subtle patterns. Um, but it, it's not bad. I don't know exactly which one may be optimal for this app, but I think both are possible solutions. So we'll go ahead and check out the school.png one and uh, see how that goes. So if we want to make it the background for all of our activities, you see I have it on this one, the generator activity, and I also have it on the names activity. Uh, the whole idea of this app, by the way, is it's a baby name generator, so you hit the start generator button, generates the names, and puts them on this list here. Very, very simple. But if you want it to show up on both screens, all your screens automatically by default, then what you actually have to do is you have to edit the styles.xml file, the moment you create a uh, an app or you just make a new app inside of Android Studio or even in Eclipse, which was the old way, um, then styles.xml will be automatically created. So here we have the base style, which basically inherits a lot of things from um, the base Android styles that uh, the Google developers defined for us all already. And then you can add in your custom theme stuff here. So right here I have window background Android uh, colon window background and that's basically saying okay we have a custom element of our app that we want to customize and that's the background of a window the default background so any any activity that uses this uh, style which by default is going to be all of them is going to inherit this stuff and what are we what are we making the background the drawable file skulls you don't need to put in the dot png uh, it just kind of figures that out automatically. So if we wanted to, um, by the way, this line wouldn't be there by default, so you'll have to add it in. But if we wanted to make that school, all we'd have to do is go and change the skulls to school. And now if we go back to the generator, bam, we've changed the background. And that doesn't look too bad, actually. Um, if we go here, yep, it should update as well. Of course, we're just looking at the design of the XML files for the layouts of each activity. And that's definitely one way you can do it. Um, but to illustrate or be kind of <clears throat> more, I guess, complete here, let's go ahead and undo the default style. Oh, shoot, what did I just do? <laughs> okay, so I've gone ahead and fixed that. Um, so we're going to have it set to skulls here, just so that it's back to the default it had before. But then inside of other areas of the app, we're going to manually change it so that we can make it um, school.png, but it's basically overriding the default style. So where we would do this is actually in the layout files for the uh, the XML layout files for each of these activities. So if we go into the text, um, we can see we have a relative layout up here, which is basically the entire thing we're looking at. The, uh, the whole screen, the whole activity is actually built on a relative layout. And, uh, of course, we have the scroll view, which is that main uh, section in there with all my little sub-elements like text views and edit texts. And those are probably the two that we would consider changing. And to do it 
uh, if you want to make the, a background on each of them, it's the same idea. So we would go Android background at drawable and then the name of the file, so school. And it should change the whole background because the relative layout is the whole screen. You can see when I kind of select here. Uh, this is the relative layout I'm clicking on the whole screen. The background, the main background of everything is school.png. But we can also change that to be the uh, background for the scroll view, which is currently uh, what's all that white stuff right there. And I'll just uh, cut that line out for a second so you can see. And then, oh, look, suddenly, suddenly that has a background. Okay, for a second I was worried. But yeah, you can see that that is in fact school.png, but the overall background as defined in styles does have the skulls.png. Um, so yeah, the process for setting a background to any element that supports it is exactly the same. So that's really all there is to it. Um, setting backgrounds on your Android apps. You either do it in styles or you do it in a layout XML file. So I've been Chris. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you want to see me do more Android tutorials, just let me know in the comments section. Aside from that, you can check out the Patreon at Chris Tutorials. Uh, Patreon com slash Chris Tutorials, excuse me. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.